So, dear colleagues, we are waiting maybe two minutes. <clears throat> Hello. 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 We have first. Hello. Also, hello, everyone. Welcome. Hello, Nina Felixana. Hello, everyone. Hello, Maria. Hello, from Kazakhstan. Hello. Yeah, I see you. Maybe two minutes. Hello, dear colleagues. Uh, uh, let me start the third section of our current conference uh, named Natural Language Processing. Uh, we are going to have a four 40 minutes long uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, every meeting uh, is going to include five presentations. Uh, consequently, the agenda of our work is following. Uh, five, um, we are going to include five presentations in every uh, Zoom meeting. And uh, um, we recommend uh, five minutes uh, for showing presentation and then five, uh, two or three minutes for asking questions. Uh, but it's up to authors if you take uh, your presentation, uh, take uh, more than five minutes, so uh, then maybe uh, you couldn't have some questions. Uh, I recommend uh, everyone to take this uh, agenda, this schedule. And uh, the first presentation, our presentation is using, using natural language processing for supply chain, chain mapping, a systematic review of current approaches. Do we have also? Yes, please. Uh, turn on your microphone. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Thank you. Hello. Uh, yes. I will. I will. I will share my screen, and then yes. we will start very shortly. So, welcome. I uh, hope you can all hear me very um, hear me clearly. So, my uh, name is Henning Schepper. Uh, I'm from Hamburg, Germany, and today I'm presenting my my paper using natural language processing for supply chain mapping a systematic review of current approaches i will try to keep this short um, so uh, the uh, coronavirus has shown that uh, global supply chains are probably not as resilient as previously thought um, so huge companies ran into trouble because of um, uh, shortages uh, doing uh, shortages of their supply um, and when we Oops, sorry. When we um, uh, dig into the reasons for that, we can uh, see that um, most companies do actually know, they do know their direct suppliers, but they often do not know their, uh, the suppliers of their suppliers and so forth. So in, in uh, conclusion, they have no or only very limited visibility into their supply chain networks. And this is causing trouble. So my research um, model is uh, I want to uh, want to develop a model uh, from which you can extract from uh, semi-structured or unstructured data, mainly textual data, uh, so blogs, news, for example. I want to extract supply chain information, for example, suppliers and customers of companies or competitors of companies. And from this, I want to derive a so-called so supply chain map. Uh, which can then uh, be used from the companies, for example, for risk management, efficiency, or even sustainability. And yeah, I have three phases uh, from which I will present the first today, uh, the identification and evaluation of current approaches. I used um, systematic literature review, um, and I brought with me today uh, the selection of studies, uh, the step of this uh, study selection, uh, where we identified roughly 400, uh, so, no, 390 records to be precise, uh, which we 
uh, drilled down in a two-stage screening process down to 12 records, which we uh, analyzed for, um, uh, which we derive for further analysis. So uh, at first step, I analyzed um, um, the, uh, I provided a cluster analysis of the, of the literature in order to show if there are any um, scientific combinations or scientific relations. Uh, I used the bibliographic coupling for this. Um, and what uh, we saw here is that the uh, state, of state of research is fragmented as we uh, have uh, described it. So we have uh, older approaches which are connected and we have newer approaches which are only very weakly coupled. And uh, what this shows is that the state of research is actually fragmented. So this uh, said already, and second, um, there is no common knowledge base in terms of, uh, of, of publication, which built the basis for, for these approaches. Um, turning to the content, um, uh, we uh, distinguished between so-called horizontal and vertical mapping approaches. So horizontal, uh, vertical means supplier customer, Ho horizontal means, for example, cooperative or competitive relations. Um, we distinguished between um, approaches which look at the content of the uh, art news articles, for example, or the links between these, if there are any links in these uh, messages and distinguish between uh, rule-based and supervised learning approaches in order to identify the relations. And we have seen that um, the, uh, most of the newer approaches use uh, focus on vertical mapping uh, based on content and use supervised learning approaches um, currently. However, we have detected that there are currently no approaches which do in the mapping dimension do both horizontal and vertical mapping. Um, they do either one of this, but not um, not at the same time or in the same process. Yeah, um, so this was a very quick <laughs> run through my presentation. I uploaded a, a, lo a longer version on YouTube, or you did. Uh, so if you uh, want to um, uh, want to look a more detailed presentation, you can look this up. And um, yeah, thank you for your attention, and I'm uh, happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. Thank you for your short presentation. Excuse me for this. Uh, do you anyone have some pre uh, question about the short presentation? No? no. Thank you, but um, I would like to ask you maybe how you, uh, in the start of the presentation, you say something about coronavirus. Uh, what is connect uh, coronavirus with <laughs> your research? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the the connection is that uh, uh, when we look at, at the effects that Corona, like, even even currently, um, Corona has serious effects on global supply chains. So um, there are disruptions, for example, that companies do not get um, do not get uh, enough resources for their production. And uh, the problem is that in order to prevent something like this, you would have you would need knowledge about where are the suppliers of my suppliers? Are they, for example, in China? Are they in in, uh, in the US or are they in Europe, but many companies actually do not know where the suppliers of their suppliers are, so they can't uh, do appropriate risk management. And this is a problem. And um, uh, the, the companies actually, so there's actually no direct uh, information transfer between the companies because there is actually no, not so much trust in, in the global supply chain. So companies basically, they do not trust each other to to share this information. And this is the reason uh, we try to, um, to get this information from other sources, external data, for example, in news and social media blogs and, and other uh, unstructured uh, data sources. Thank you very much. It's very interesting. I need a long time for discuss. Thank you. And next <laughs> Thank presentation. You. Thank you. Next presentation, Dmitry Vladimirovich Lande, using mm -hmm part of speech taken of building networks of terms in legal sphere. Please, Dmitry Vladimirovich. Hello, uh, greetings. I am Professor Dmitry Lande. 
my report is uh, on the topic using parts of speech taken for building network of terms in legal sphere. Will be read by Oleg Dmitrienko. Oleg Dmitrienko is my postgraduate student. He is my co-author. Presentation is already uploaded uh, to YouTube. Oleg Dmitrienko, please. Oleg Dmitrienko. Okay. Let's start. I'll start sharing uh, our presentation. Uh, I see. Yes, I can see. Okay, let's start. Good afternoon, dear audience. Let me introduce myself. My name is Oleg Dmitrenko. I'm a PhD student of the Institute for Information Recording of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine. And today I'm going to talk about using part of speech tagging for building network of terms in legal sphere. Professor Dmitry Landy is a co-author of this work. I want to start from the fact that the information space is developing faster than ever before. This process is characterized by the rapid increase in data volumes. But the majority of such data, however, are unstructured and including unnecessary and noisy data. It should be noted, uh, scientific and technological progress has also affected in particular the legal sphere. The number of normative legal documents submitted in electronic form in, is also constantly growing. Uh, and in order to make legal decision, it's sometimes necessary to read thousands of documents, deliberately rejecting information noise. Thus, the problem of computerized processing of legal information and improving exciting or developing new automatic text summarization systems that simplifies access to the main content of the text without the need to process a large text document are still a relevant task. The defined feature of legal information is that the related texts are not fully freely accessible and unstructured. These features are important to consider when choosing the appropriate method or approach for solving the problem of computerized text processing in legal sphere. In this work, it proposed to use a linguistic network model, a ontological model of uh, text data. One of the form of uh, this network is a model built uh, of keywords and phrases. In this network of terms, notes correspond to the individual words and phrases in the text and the edge to the formal semantic connection between them. The proposed in this work method for determining keywords and phrases is based on the use of the result of obtained through the process of classifying words by parts of speech. This slide presents the pen band list of texts that use it for part of speech tagging task. Next slide presents the most used part of speech in English, such as uh, determinants, uh, nouns, verbs, uh, and uh, so on. In general, individual nouns uh, that usually related with people, place, scenes, or concepts, uh, and nouns coupled with adjectives are considered uh, as key terms. Also in this work, phrase that satisfies the patterns presented on this slide are considered to be important. After forming the phrase according to describe it about patterns and arranging them in the certain order, the individual stop words are removed. Next, for each term that satisfies the pattern proposed above in the order of its occurrence in the text, the so-called tuple is formed. Each tuple consists of three elements. The first element is a term, a word or format phrase. The next is a tag or combination of tags assigned to the word depending on to which part of speech this word or phrase belong. The last element of this set is the numeric values of global term frequency. Global term frequency is calculated taking into account the two first elements of the tuple, the words or phrase and the part of speech to which it belongs. The number of such identical pairs that normalize it to the total number of format terms in the whole text determines the value of the third element of the format tuple. In other words, global term frequency determines how the term is important in the global content. The next step is to determine the undirected link between the key terms in the text. 
The horizontal visibility graph algorithm is used to transform time series that format with the sequences of numerical values of global term frequency into the undirected graph. According to this algorithm, at the first stage, the, uh, a number of nodes marked on the horizontal axis, uh, each of which corresponds to the term in the order in which they appear in the text. And the weight values, the numerical estimates, are marked on the vertical axis. Two nodes are connected in the horizontal visibility graph if and only if these nodes are in the direct visibility. Direct visibility between nodes means that uh, they can be connected with the horizontal line, uh, which does not intersect any vertical line in the resulting plot. And uh, at the second stage, a horizontal visibility graph is built. The next step is to determine the direction of links in the undirected network of terms obtained at above. Uh, if there is an undirected link between the nodes, then uh, the directed network uh, of terms is built uh, on the principle of entering the terms into its uh, corresponding phrase with more number of words. And for individual key words uh, on the principle of visibility from left to right. To determine the weight of things, it proposes to combine or in other words, merge the nodes that correspond to the same terms in the previously built directed network into a single one. The number of same directed links between the same nodes determines the weight of this link. Uh, the freely available English text, Universal Declaration of Human I'm Rights. Sorry, what, unfortunately, um, what, you, your time is over. Please finish, uh, please. I, I have only to finish. Uh, yes. 30 seconds. Uh, if okay, nothing, okay. I, try to finish, yes. I finish it. Mm -hmm. uh, freely accessible text, Universal Declaration of Human Rights was used to test the proposed methodology. And uh, as a result, uh, the terminological ontology in the form of network of terms was obtained. And in conclusion, I want to say that uh, in this work, it was proposed a new methodology for building ontological models in a legal sphere, which uh, can be used in particular in systems uh, of automatic legal information summarization. Okay, thank you all for attention. Thank you very much. Maybe one question if someone has it. Yes, I have please. one question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, tell me please, uh, how many text or maybe what was the volume of words which we used uh, for building your network of uh, terms of legal sphere? What was the volume? Uh, in this case, uh, for example, for the network of terms, which uh, was presented uh, on the previous slide, mm -hmm. uh, it was used uh, only one document. Uh, it's a quite short document. Uh, uh, which uh, name it uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but uh, also uh, the proposed methodology was uh, tested on the other documents, for example, uh, uh, Convention of Rights uh, of the Child, International uh, Conventional uh, uh, Conventant of Civil or Political Rights uh, and International Conventant on Economic, Social and uh, Cultural Rights. Uh, and also our methodology was tested uh, on uh, simple texts, uh, for example, uh, fairy tales, because uh, this text uh, is easy to understand, is easy to understand for everyone. Uh, and uh, key terms and connection between these terms uh, is uh, easy to interpret in and also understand when we test a simple text. But also our methodology was tested uh, on the uh, quite uh, big uh, co corpora. Corpora, oh. okay. So mm -hmm. you can you your approach on different yeah. topics for tax, yes. not only legal. Not on the legal sphere, but also- it's very interesting. Field. Thank you very much. I understand that it's very interesting thing for Nastya, for me, for Kem Zhumazhanch, <laughs> but we don't have time. Uh, next presentation is, thank you very much, Alex. Okay, uh, we also thanks okay. for the attention.
Uh, next presentation, a uh, comparative study on the PIDER feature weighting method and its analysis uh, using instructed data set, please. Okay. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, give me some seconds. I'm sharing my screen. Uh, please share. You can share. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my screen is visible, ma'am. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so I'm Mamda Das uh, from National Institute of Technology, Tiruchirappalli uh, from India. And uh, I'm a PhD scholar. And today I'm going to represent our research work, a comparative study on TFID feature retaining method and its analysis using unstructured data set. Uh, before it started, let me introduce our team. Uh, Dr. Salva Kumar Kamalanathan is my supervisor. And my co-guide is uh, PJA Alphonse. He is also a HOD of our department. And uh, I would like to um, say that my presentation is divided into some parts. That is, uh, I will start with introduction and uh, some related work on TFID feature retaining method. And then I will discuss about our proposed um, methodology. And after that, I will uh, talk about data set and uh, some data previous technique that we have used in our method. And then I'll uh, discuss about uh, feature ex extraction that is Ngram and TFID and also the performance met parameter. And uh, at the end of the presentation, we will uh, look at some figure and table for the result. And obviously I will uh, mention some future duration of our work. So uh, we know that uh, nowadays uh, um, we are dealing with huge volume of data and uh, there has been a considerable uh, rise in social media and giants like uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, IMD movies platform, thus uh, proving them to be a massive amount of big data. And uh, we must uh, use various techniques of the data mining for finding these potential useful patterns uh, from this huge data before you can uh, extract necessary information from that. So a uh, sentiment analysis is the practice to classify various samples of related text uh, or video or audio into overall positive or negative um, uh, categories using different algorithms, right? So uh, this is our uh, some related work on the, um, this uh, method, like uh, research on sentiment analysis uh, has been increasing uh, tremendously for the last 15 years due to the wide range of social and uh, business applications. And we have done some survey on that. We can see some related work here. So, Numberless uh, research has been done on the feature weighting method and uh, for detecting some sentiment from the text. Um, but still, there is a large scope of uh, refinement of this existing uh, sentiment analysis models and the performance of uh, the existing approach can be uh, further improved by the uh, more sem semantic information. So uh, this is our proposed methodology. And uh, here we can, uh, if you look at this methodology, we can see that uh, first we have collected our data set and after that we have done some data pre-processing and we extract features. Then we have uh, split the data into the uh, training and testing data set and we have used a uh, different classifier to evaluate the model. And finally, uh, performance metric used to measure the behavior and performance of our methodology. So uh, this is our data set. Uh, and uh, to evaluate the performance uh, of the proposed method, we used one of the most popular uh, publicly available movie reviews data set. And uh, this standard data set uh, is known as IMDb movie review data set. Uh, and uh, this standard data set uh, um, is uh, uh, proposed by the Andrew uh, Raymond, uh, Peter uh, and Christopher in 2011. And, uh, it consists of uh, 50,000 uh, reviews and uh, uh, which labeled as uh, 25,000 reviews labeled as positive and 25,000 reviews labeled as negative. And uh, it is one of the standard benchmark uh, data set used for the sentiment analysis uh, on movie reviews. And uh, we also conducted experiment uh, using the Amazon Alexa user review data set. And it is also containing uh, 3,000 uh, reviews labeled and which contain uh, 1,500 reviews labeled as positive and uh, 1,500 reviewed as uh, negative. This is also a benchmark data set for the sentiment analysis. And uh, now this is our feature extractions, uh, our feature extraction method containing uh, two features. One is Ngram and another one is uh, TFID. And we know that uh, the, this uh, Ngram is used for the method feature extraction, uh, extraction for the supervised machine learning and here N equals to 
maybe one for immunogram, two for the bigram, and three for the trigram, and so on. And um, we know this the technique, like uh, if we have a sentence, like research is creating a new knowledge. And uh, if we consider n equal to two, then uh, uh, it will be like uh, research is creating, creating new and new knowledge is like that. And this is our another feature extraction method that is TFIDF. And we know very well that TFIDF is a statistical model which evaluates the significance of the word in the document. And we will know that this term frequency is a, a matrix, a two dimensional matrix, and this IDF is a one dimensional matrix and I would get the TFID by multiplying these uh, two matrix. Okay, so let's suppose we have a document and this document containing 100 words. So out of this 100 words, if uh, our research uh, word is uh, appears five times, then term frequency will be five by 100, that is 0 0.05. And uh, suppose we have um, 40,000 uh, documents and out of this forum documents, uh, we have uh, 400 research words. So IDF will be like uh, 40,000 divided by 400, that is 100. So we uh, will get the TFIDF like uh, uh, this 0 0.05 multiply 100, that is 5. So this is our TFIDF. This like containing the equation of the TFIDF, we know the equation of uh, TFIDF, that is uh, term frequency into inverse document frequency. And these are the terminologies and these are the equations. Uh, so in our film, method we have uh, used uh, data preprocessing technique and uh, we know this is uh, this data preprocessing uh, in, uh, processing is important issue while uh, processing raw data set and uh, in this step uh, we uh, transform um, uh, or encoded the data into the machine can easily parse it and we have gone through the some step um, for the purpose of data processing uh, we can see the seven step that is missing values tokenization normalization stemming gammatization removing stop words and noise removal so this is a uh, missing values and uh, we know there are uh, so many uh, steps in the uh, for missing values and we just use uh, we just eliminate the uh, rows with our missing data so this is a tokenization as uh, time is so limited so i'm going through the just slide okay so these are the seven steps and um, for the performance mm -hmm. parameter in our research uh, the uh, in our research, uh, the key realization is that uh, not all correct or incorrect matches hold equal value. So a single metric will not tell the whole evaluation of the classification. So therefore, we have uh, used accuracy, recall, and precision, and F1 um, score. Uh, this uh, and we got the maximum uh, maximum accuracy in uh, 93.81 in TFIDF uh, feature retaining method in case of Amazon Alexa, and these are the minimum value. Uh, this is the precision maximum value and this is the minimum and uh, this uh, recall value 93.81 is maximum and um, 91.99 uh, is maximum f1 score in case of amazon alexa and minimum is 55.7 for i am divided asset and uh, this uh, uh, as i told in this paper we consider two feature feature that is one is n gram and another one is tfid okay so here in IMDb movie reviews and Alexa um, reviews data set are uh, used for the sentiment analysis. And this table shows uh, the output of four performance parameter that is uh, accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. And uh, with a, of a six classification technique that is the one is multinomial, NB, SVM, NK, Navas, Lawless, segregation, decision tree, and random forest. And uh, uh, here we can see our logistic regression uh, got the maximum value in case of IMDb uh, movie review data set uh, in case of Amazon Alexa. Logistic regression got the maximum result in accuracy, recall and F1 score, but uh, precision got the maximum result in case of random forest. In this table, we can see for the TFIDF feature reading method and uh, here SVM got the maximum result uh, for all um, of the metrics and uh, uh, random forest got the maximum result in case of Amazon Alexa review reviews. And uh, so uh, these figures, uh, shows the comparison of uh, Ngram and TFID approach in case of movie review data set and this uh, for the uh, Amazon Alexa review data set. And this is our some feature research uh, direction. Like you know, in our feature, uh, feature research, we can use clustering techniques, maybe K-means or something or another algorithm. And we know another um, alternative of IDF is IGM, that is inverse gravity movement. And that may be used for the term weighting in the next classifications. Uh, and so many uh, directions are there. So these differences are used for these presentations. And so this all of, from my side. Thank you. Uh, I'm stopping right here. Thank you. Thank you, Mamata. Okay. Oh, you okay. very 
uh, quick making presentation thank yeah. you and uh, i am sorry for our limited time very sorry yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's very deep and entirely making uh, studies and researches uh, do you have uh, any question I have maybe one question for you. Okay, uh, okay. Your research concerning English, uh, English language, yes? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you think about uh, uh, using all these methods that we all know, I understand, uh, for, um, for other languages? For example, yeah. for maybe... Actually, I'm thinking about as I'm I'm from India here, so many languages there, and our mother tongue also is Bengali language. So I'm also uh, um, thinking about that um, at the in future maybe I will uh, use um, Bengali or Spanish language instead of this English language. I'm uh, I'm thinking about that, ma'am. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we don't have time for other questions. Okay, thank okay. you, thank you. And okay. next presentation, we have uh, automatic multilingual ontology generation based on text focused on criminal topics. And fortunately, we uh, have uh, all, uh, all uh, so authors of this research from uh, Kazakhstan and from Ukraine and uh, I see Arkenzy Majanich and Galia and uh, Nastya who is going to make this presentation. Nastya, please, you have eight minutes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a PhD student uh, from the Department uh, of Intellectual Computer System of Kharkiv Polytechnic Institute. Do you see my presentation? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And I would like to present our joint research in collaboration with my colleagues, uh, Professor Nina Khairova and Yulia Litvinenko, and colleagues from the Institute of uh, Information and Computational Technologies, uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, agenda of our research is shown on this slide. So the problem of thematic um, identification of text on the inter internet can be divided in two main areas. Uh, the psycholinguistic approach, which is based on the sentiment analysis and an approach uh, based on keywords or ontologies. Often researchers applied sentiment analysis methods to compare the level of uh, anger, hatred and racism. At the same time, uh, the use of sentiment analysis approaches is not reliable and accurate for now. Uh, along with sentiment analysis, uh, some studies use machine learning classification approaches. And the second approach be based on the keywords um, for text analysis. Such researches provide a dictionary that contain keywords and phrases typical for various uh, types of extremist activity. Uh, there are a few studies aimed at creating and describing text corpora containing some criminal content. The manually established and filled by substantive Lexis dictionary is the base of our uh, approach to automatic ontology generation. Uh, the Lexis for our XML dictionary have been obtained by hand from text on crime related uh, topics in English, uh, Ukrainian, Kazakh, and Russian languages. Three main semantic uh, categories were selected for the terms. Uh, namely road traffic, accidents, uh, homicide, and disappearance or abduction. It includes uh, three types of basic elements, nouns, verbs, and adjectives, which in turn consist of child elements term. Each element term presents a word in a given part of speech uh, with its synonyms in four languages where accordingly child elements uh, lemma and synthet with attribute lemma. Uh, in order to make the dictionary easy to use and complete, uh, a special application has been developed. Uh, the first multilingual corpus that we use uh, comprises text in Russian, Ukrainian, and English languages. Uh, the second multilingual corpus uh, that we use in our study is the parallel Russian Kazakh corpus that have been developing for more than three years, and now it consists of text uh, from the Kazakh news websites. Uh, for the period of 2018-2020, uh, and at the moment its volume is uh, 3,000 texts in Russian and 3,000 texts in Kazakh. Uh, the following logical linguistic model of text extraction was developed during our previous research, represented uh, on the slide. 
as the main stage of the ontology building is our logical linguistic model of information extraction from unstructured text. Uh, this model allows representing a fact from a text by the RDF triplet format without defining specific relation in advance. Since this kind of uh, fact is usually expressed by various unregulated uh, constructions of the natural language, uh, we identify lexical units that name the participants of the action, uh, the subject and the object, and semantic rela relation between them in the sentence. For this purpose, uh, we use created equations that shows grammatical and semantic uh, characteristics of the action participants. By now, we have adapted our model to English, Ukrainian, Kazakh, and Russian languages. Uh, our approach uh, to semi-automatic feeling of the ontology is based on the syntactic relations in the sentence. As the meaning of an entity is limited by possible combinations of uh, this entity with other concepts of uh, or entities. Uh, in the first step of our algorithm, we analyze each individual sentence uh, of the text and find the effect uh, that is represented by the predicate, the subject, and the object. In the next step, we check if three found elements are in our dictionary uh, for every particular language. If two components are of the triple are found as elements, lemma tag or synthet tag, and one component is not found in the dictionary, the last one is automatically placed in. Uh, in the last step, a native speaker uh, has to check the result of the pneumatic filling of the dictionary so that it fully corresponds uh, to the semantic focus, namely the criminal, criminal related uh, information. Uh, the present work resulted in the creation of an automatically filled uh, full language dictionary of terms and synonyms on criminal topic. Uh, in future, uh, we, want to, uh, we want our approach to suit different corpora and uh, different research topics, not only criminal. Thank you for attention. Any questions, please? We have time for questions. Yes, I have I have a question, but <laughs> I don't have time for my presentation. <laughs> yes. Oh, Valerina, <laughs> we will start next part of our uh, sections uh, with your presentation. I'm sorry, <laughs> but okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, uh, next part of our session uh, will uh, is starting at uh, one uh, fifty. Exactly one and mm -hmm. fifty, but uh, now we have to put two minutes for some questions. No. Okay. No questions. Uh, okay. Now, uh, if uh, uh, we don't have any question, we have now time for coffee break. Uh, enjoy with the cup of tea or cup of coffee and we are wait, uh, waiting for you uh, exactly at uh, uh, 1 and 50 or 10 minutes to 2 uh, and we will start with the last presentation of this uh, part of Zoom meetings. It will be identification of the author's idea based on uh, the model modified text trunk method, and then we will uh, go in, uh, try go in a range. Thank you, and uh, we are- in Nina Felixson, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Can you give the link for the next- uh, Yes, the okay. same link. Yes, the same ah, link. Thank, okay. The same thank link, you. Yeah, the same okay, link, but uh, um, one hour and 50 minutes, exactly. We are waiting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we are waiting for you. you, every of you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat>